Hi everyone, this is Bill from AT Makers and I am happy to share with you our 3D printed switches. These switches are easy to print. They are basically printed in three parts uh, along with a base if you want to mount it to a, um, a quarter 20 or other type of mount here. Uh, they have flange mounts as well along the outside uh, and it will print on ABS, PLA, anything you've got handy. Uh, these are easily assembled. They unscrew. Underneath you'll find a spring on the top as well as a tiny button that then will activate your switch. One interesting feature is that you can actually replace this spring to make it more or less uh, resistive to touch. You also can shave down this stem if you want to add additional throw to the switch. As you can see, the design has two options. One is to actually add a jack so that you can replace the cord with any aux cord. The second is just to run an aux cord directly in and wire it to the switch. This video is going to walk you through all the steps necessary to put this switch together. When you're done, you'll have a switch that'll work on any standard switch. It has a mono plug that'll work on any adapted toys or speech generating devices. In this case, I'm going to show you how it works on our switch adapted jack in the box. The first thing you'll need to do is download the files to print. Now, 3D printing files are called STLs and they're kind of like PDF files where if you download them and bring them to somebody with a 3D printer, they can print them for you. To download ours, you'll want to go to Thingiverse. That's a standard place to find 3D files and that's where you'll find ours. So you, you'll either find links directly near where you found this video or if you go to Thingiverse and you search for AT Makers like this, you go to our page where all of our designs are there. In this case, we want this design right here, which is the AT switch. Here you see our AT switch. You can see pictures of the finished product, uh, all the parts along the way, the different things you can expect to print. You'll also see at the end here, there are pictures of, that are renderings of the actual three parts you're going to print. This one is the body, this one is the top, and this one is the bevel. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a whole section here that says Thing Files. Here you'll find all three of those STL files. These are the files that you're going to want to bring to your STEM program, your public library, or that you're going to want to send to a service like 3D Hubs to get printed. Once you've got your printed parts, it's time to assemble it. Let's get started. All right, let's uh, start with the tools we're going to need. Uh, we are going to need a soldering iron. We'll need uh, some helping hands to uh, hold things in place while we solder them. Uh, we will need some wire cutters. Uh, I like using these for when I'm just soldered, but uh, some kind of wire cutters will be needed here. Uh, we'll need wire strippers. So this is the one uh, I use the most. It's a wire stripper that grabs it for you. Uh, a lot of you will have this kind instead. This is fine too. You can just put the wire in there and strip off what you need. Uh, in, the, in our case, we might, and probably will, use a razor knife to uh, pull back the sheathing on the, uh, the aux cable we're going to cut open. And at the end, we will need... Um, some way to create heat to um, heat shrink the tubing. You're also going to need a multimeter. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Anything that has a either an ohm reading, a resistance reading, or just a continuity tester like this. This is the setting right here. It's got the little audible uh, symbol on it. And if you push them together, you'll hear that sound. That's going to be very useful because we're going to need to know which of the wires is connected to the tip. So on a stereo uh, plug, this is the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. And we are going to wire the ring and sleeve together to make it mono. And then we really do care which one has the tip. So we're going to use the continuity tester to figure out which wire is the tip. As far as materials and things we're going to put into the switch itself, we need the 3D printed parts uh, for this. So we've got the base, this is the shroud, 
this is the button. Uh, all of these are printed. In this case, they're all printed in PLA. You can print them in ABS as well, but it doesn't really matter. We'll also need an aux cable. Now, I've chosen a very long aux cable here. Uh, just we have a nice uh, long cord. We're going to cut this in half, and then we'll end up with two five-foot wires that we can use as the, uh, the actual cords for our switch. Uh, if you have just used the longest one you have, or what, don't choose anything expensive. In this case, this is a stereo aux cable. It doesn't matter if it's a stereo or mono, or even if it has three conductors. We'll show you how to adapt that. We'll need a button. This is a, a small uh, 12 millimeter uh, button, which is a basic switch. I'll give you a closer view of that in a minute. We will need a couple pieces of heat shrink tubing just to, to seal that in there. Again, I'll get closer pictures of that in a minute. We will need a spring. This is about a three quarter inch spring just out of a variety pack from Lowe's. Uh, it goes underneath the button top here. And then once we have the button working, we will actually add this switch mount. This is from a different project, but it'll work great. We've got three screws to screw this base into this, and then we'll be able to mount it on anything that has a quarter 20 camera mount. Our first step here is to uh, take our aux cord and cut it in half. We're going to cut it in half so that we get two cords that we can use uh, for two separate switches. So we're going to take uh, any cutters you have handy. These are usually very thin wires. Cut them and we're going to set one of these aside. On the other one we're going to need to open this up and there should be three separate conductors in here that we're going to work with. Pull off that sheet. Now we have a red, a red, a clear, and a blue sheath on these. All of these are insulated. They are just very, very small and insulated. Uh, and they will be very hard to strip. And they're not, not actually meant to be stripped. They are meant to be soldered directly to uh, another item. So uh, in order to figure out which of these is the tip, we are going to add some solder to the end of one of these so that we can use our continuity tester. All right, so we have a tin tip here. That insulation has burned off of that. And we are going to test continuity between the tip of the jack, right, the tick of, tip of the plug right here, and this blue wire. As you can see, it has a good connection. So in this case, blue is our tip, and the other two will be our sleeve and our ring. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, we were going to uh, get the tip separate and the ring and sleeve together. What that effectively does is it treats this stereo jack, stereo plug, as if it were mono. Because these two are shorted together, it acts just like a mono plug, which has only a sleeve. So in this case, this ring will be directly tied to the sleeve. And in order to do that, we're going to take this red and the clear. It, it looks coppery, but it's actually got a clear um, covering on it. And we are going to twist them together. And then we are going to solder them together, just like we did the blue one. test that, we'll hold one side of our lead, one of our leads to the sleeve and touch the other one here. We'll also test it against the ring and that's good. 
Now, what we also have to double check is that we didn't somehow screw up and short this out completely. So we'll check over here to make sure our tip is still only connecting at the tip. So basically what we just did is we converted this to a mono plug. Now our next step should be to solder on the switch, but you'll notice that this plug will not fit through this hole. So we actually have to fish these wires through before we do our soldering. Here's a close-up view of the button switch we're using. There are a couple changes we're going to have to do to make this fit. Um, the first is you'll see there are little tabs on the bottom. Uh, here and here, little plastic tabs. We're going to cut those off just so that it fits flush. Also, you'll see that it actually has four legs, four solder points. But we're only going to use two of them, so we're going to bend the other two down. Looking at the switch housing, the base, you'll see that this is the way that the switch will fit in. Basically, uh, just like that. So we need to have uh, these two pins pulled out and the other two bent back. Here I'll use a pair of flush cut pliers to just cut off these little tabs. All right, our next step is to take these two wires that we just joined, put one of them on this side, one of them on the other side with some heat shrink tubing. I've already got solder on these two from when we were doing our testing, so I don't need to tin those, but I do need to tin these two points so that uh, they will stick, and I've got to remember to put on my heat shrink tubing uh, before we finish this soldering, or it will be too late later to do that. Okay? Okay, we'll go ahead and tin these two. We'll take a little bit of solder to the iron, up to the pad. That's fine. We'll go ahead and do the other side. Alright, so we have fresh solder on both solder points. Now all we have to do is connect these two. So we'll put the tip on this side just by holding it right here. Briefly bringing the heat to it. Holding it in place while it cools. And trying it again if it doesn't work. There we go. All right, so that's soldered. Now all we've got to do is bring up our heat shrink tubing. Let's assemble this. We'll pull our wire back through. It fits in there perfectly. And now it's time to test and see whether or not this worked. So the simplest way to test with the tools we have nearby is to use our continuity tester. So I will hold one of these to the sleeve, the other to the tip. When I hit the button, we have a good tone. You can see that right here. When I hit the button, it's all good. Oops. I should also test when I hold this to the ring and the tip, I should also get a good working button. And that shows we've actually wired this as a mono jack. A better test, of course, would be to actually use a toy. So we plug this into one of our switch adapted jack in the boxes. Boop. 
works just fine. Before we put this together completely, we might want to consider uh, what happens when somebody pulls on this cord. Now, if we use a jack, obviously that would be sturdier, which might be recommended in the case of somebody who's going to be uh, a little bit tougher on the, on the switch. But in our case, we can do a couple things um, that, to make this easier. One is simply to tie a knot, right? We can simply tie a knot here in the cord. And as long as we leave enough wire in here, uh, we should be good. And that way, it won't be easy to pull through. That's probably just fine for what we're doing. If you wanted, you could also put in a drop of hot glue. We won't bother in this case. All right, we have our spring. We're going to put that onto the button top, which is held in place by the bevel. And we will simply put that in place over the switch and twist it on. You may find you have to twist it back a half a turn before it grabs. And now, we should have a good working switch. Let's test it out. Works perfect. Love it. Our last step here is very simple and completely optional, but you'll notice that this switch actually has three mounting holes. If you're going to mount this onto a plate or a piece of wood or something like that, that's just great. But in our case, we're going to actually want it to be mountable on a quarter 20 camera mount. So we're going to take our quarter 20 three, three inch mount here. It's the AT, AT Makers printed one. It has a quarter 20 T nut in it. So we're going to go ahead and use three screws to hold this onto here. So there you have it. Our switch is all assembled. We've got all of our parts together. It works great. On this end, you'll find a mono cord, which you can plug into any of your AT devices or toys. Uh, on the back side here, you'll see it does have the quarter 20 mount, which is currently being mounted on a bracket onto a uh, PVC pipe. Probably a good use for it. Lots of other ways. Make sure you check out our video that shows how to use quarter 20 mounts for switches. Uh, we also will be coming out with some other back ends for this mount. One to go on a rail, uh, one to go on a GoPro, things like that. As a final thought, I'd like to think of this as Mark 1 of our switches. And actually, while we will make a couple changes to this one in the future, we'll probably make a wider version. And we might make a shorter version. The main reason this is so tall is to support the uh, adjustable switch tensions. I'm not sure if that's always necessary. We'll find out as people use it. Uh, but we'll probably make a version that is both shorter and another one that is wider. Uh, and I think we'll probably make at least two other types of switches, maybe three. I know we'll make a version that's a very light touch, that is a, you know, 10 to 25 grams of pressure uh, using a lever system. Uh, we'll probably make a proximity or a, a touch sensor switch as well with a little relay in it. Uh, and uh, we, we may find some others that, that we need as well. Um, as we do, we'll release them all publicly. Uh, and they'll all be available on Thingiverse. So I'm glad if you, if you are able to do this, that's great. Share your story with us on the Facebook group. Uh, if you're working with a STEM club, make sure they let us know so they can get service hours for it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this project. As always, good luck and have fun.